stem cell therapy as used today would greatly benefit from identification of agents that can expand stem cells, agents that can be administered to the patient to be able to expand stem cells in vivo. We're going to discuss a paper which seems to have identified such stem cell um, stimulatory pro properties of a clinically used drug called valproic acid. Valproic acid is currently used for treatment of various neurological disorders um, and it is not known how it works to treat epilepsy or bipolar disorders but what is known is that valproic acid is a histone deacetylase inhibitor. Histones are proteins around which DNA is wrapped around and by tight wrapping of DNA different parts of the DNA are silenced. Now when histones are acetylated then the DNA is not wrapped as tightly around the histones and parts of the DNA that should be silenced become expressed. Now the question of the paper is because it's known valproic acid has this ability to reopen silent DNA. The question is can valproic acid actually cause rejuvenation of stem cells or for a better word would be can it help expansion of stem cells without differentiation. So on the first set of experiments bone marrow stem cells were taken and CD34 cells were examined in a bone marrow stem cell culture, a 10 day stem cell culture. And as you can see in the figure the higher concentration of alpoic acid added which is on the which is on the x-axis versus percentage of CD34 cells, there's an increase in the number of CD34 cells in the 10-day culture with higher concentrations of valproic acid compared to control. The absolute numbers of CD34 cells in the culture also increased in a dose-dependent manner. Interestingly, when one looks at the numbers of CD34 cells which are undifferentiated in comparison to CD14 cells which are differentiated, which are essentially monocytes. One sees that in the 10-day culture, the longer culture with the, the culture with higher concentration of alpoic acid leads to a dose-dependent increase in CD34 cells and a decrease in, in the CD14 cells, where there's less differentiated cells and more undifferentiated cells. Now, Looking at cell mer markers is fine, but the next question is, do these cells actually have functional ability? After you grow them in culture, if you plate the cells on a semi-solid media and you look at how many colonies they form, how many colonies of differentiated cells. So as you can see, in, when you take on the left-hand side, is cells that were grown first in liquid culture, so that the stem cells can expand, and control TRA means transretinoic acid and v VPA valproic acid. You can see that the number of cells that differentiate when you put them on solid, semi solid media on methyl cellulose is much higher in the cells that were treated originally in liquid culture with valproic acid. Now, if you take these cells which you've differentiated and you replate them on a second methyl cellulose plate, which is the treatments on the right hand side, you can see that there is almost no replating efficiency of cells, stem cells going under control conditions, very little under transretinoic acid, but the number of secondary colonies is maintained in cells that were treated with valproic acid, indicating that not only do we see a number, but we see a numerical increase in CD34, but we also see a functional increase in ability to become different cells when you add the differentiation media. Now when you grow the cells in vitro under control conditions or, or transretinoic acid or valproic acid and then transfer them in vivo in a, a competitive repopulation assay to repopulate immune compromised mice, one can see that cells treated with valproic acid were competitive as, or as compared to control cells and also transretinoic acid can um, also enhance the functional activity of the stem cells uh, function, I mean in vivo function. So uh, the conclusions of these 
of these studies is that valproic acid increases stem cell proliferation, decreases differentiation in vitro, in vitro increases the stem cell function as measured by colony forming units, and in vivo increases competitive ability to reconstitute an animal. How does this work? Well, when you look at the cell cycle, one can see that in contrast to control uh, and transretinoic acid, the CD34 cells, there is 38% of the cells that were treated with valproic acid enter the S phase of cell cycle, in contrast to 20% for control and 23% for transretinoic acid. So it seems like there's an in induction of cell cycle progression by treatment with valproic acid. When you look at either a stem cell antigen positive lineage negative or purified CD34 cells, one also sees suppression of P21 in the cells treated with valproic acid. So as you can see, uh, P21 is an inhibitor of cell cycle progression, so what it seems is like valproic acid is inhibiting expression of the inhibitor. Uh, the GSK 3 beta pathway. When this, when GSK3 beta is phosphorylated, it is inhibited, and by its inhibition, there is a increase in the Wnt pathway. And as you can see in this figure, treatment of valproic acid, but not control or transretinoic acid, induced phosphorylation of GSK3 beta. And HOXB3 is a stimulator of stem cell proliferation, stem cell replication, and the levels of HOXP3, HOXB3 in the stem cell antigen positive cells, lineage negative cells, were increased by treatment with valproic acid. So in conclusion, it appears that valproic acid enhances stem cell replication while inhibiting differentiation. This occurs by st inducing cell cycle progression, associated with inhibition of the P21, the cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor, P21, um, inhibition of GSK3 beta by its phosphorylation, uh, which one would believe upregulates the wind pathway, and HOXB3, which is downstream of the wind pathway, is also stimulated. Thank you very much.